Last component I'd like to address, particularly in the dental, is what conditions would we want to treat with this particular type of laser. And, uh, and for a quick rundown on conditions, of course we're looking at TMD, that means the actual joint and or the soft tissue components of it. Um, we can look at gingivitis, extremely effective. Bacterial management, that is uh, these Lumix lasers and studies on them alone have shown that a reduction in bacterial uh, uh, dental socket pocket bacterial counts of approximately 92% within three treatments. So um, the bacterial management component is not because laser uh, actually kills bacteria, it's because laser actually biomodulates immune function and in this case in a bacterial situation it will actually increase immune function so that that um, bacteria can be addressed by your own immune system so um, which is actually quite fascinating and powerful in and of itself myofascial trigger point management for tmd type problems uh, neuropathies uh, trigeminal neuropathy um, particularly with the cold laser, it's critical. Continuous wave lasers alone and, and lasers you cannot turn off the continuous on are not uh, indicated for neuropathies because again, nerve tissue does not like excessive heat uh, or any heat for that matter that it, when it's inflamed. Uh, pain management in general associated with TMJ or TMD and uh, its reflexive effects upon cervical muscle spasms and function and uh, headache production, cephalgia. Uh, all of this can be treated in a dental um, environment and uh, including cervical spine uh, from C7 up is my understanding to uh, any part and component of the head area that is related to the neuromusculoskeletal system. Uh, infl inflammation management, so inflammation of course, these are tremendous in situations of dental cleaning. If uh, the therapist would go in and treat the gum or the, uh, the, the gum structures after a, a thorough cleaning, they can reduce inflammation and increase comfort um, for that patient profoundly. That is within minutes. And uh, so they can walk away with a better experience and a faster recovery because it will accelerate healing and repair. We can look at um, other components of inflammation, particularly in association with the TMJ structure uh, and treating it directly for reducing inflammation. Accelerated post-surgical recovery because of the, uh, not only the photochemical effect of all lasers, but in addition with the Lumix line is the photomechanical effect of higher frequencies will definitively accelerate healing rates of tissue sometime, often two to five times faster than normal. We see that in neuromusculoskeletal and trauma um, all the time. The, uh, again, trauma recovery is another, that is for any dent dental trauma or facial trauma related to or involving dental um, for the same reasons. Degenerative joint uh, regeneration, that is, is uh, arresting and or restoring function or restoring tissue histology within the degenerative tissue that is again because of the gene expression stem cell correlation with uh, 40,000 pulses or more. And uh, last would be cervicalgia, cephalgia, cervical uh, pain and dysfunction associated with TMJ um, dysfunction as well. So we have a number of treatment conditions that can be addressed within the dental industry and the, because of the, the small or the, the physical size of most of the tissues involved, the actual treatment times are extremely fast.
and the um, so the integration into your workflow into your treatment cycle is marginal extremely marginal compared to the return on your investment from a, a, a time and patient management point of view. Uh, they become very powerful tools and adjuncts to, um, to dental treatment, prevention, uh, correction, recovery, and, uh, and they become tremendous patient pleasers because of their real time in your office response curve that we see with this level of technology. When utilizing the equipment in a dental setting, then we again have the two treatment heads. One is the more of the therapeutic head for uh, tissue management, and the second is going to be the dental head that allows us to treat more focally for numerous uh, aspects of um, bacterial control, etc. The one thing to note about the Lumix lasers is that the high ability to penetrate tissue means that even in the case of gingivitis, we can actually treat along the gum line from the outside because the only tissue between the laser beam and the, the gum line is actually the cheek or the, the superficial tissues of the face and the beam has no problem going through that to treat underlying tissues. It will have more difficulty getting through the actual gum and bone and dent uh, dentine areas um, so that the other component of treating gingivitis would be to uh, use the dental tip so that you can actually go ahead and get on the inside or the medial aspect of the gum line, both uh, lower and upper. So in the process of treating, the if I want to treat gingivitis and this particular laser, we can of course apply that against the skin as well and simply follow the gum line and take um, probably for a full treatment. Uh, from the outside, we're looking at perhaps 30 to 45 seconds. When I switch to treating from the inside, then we would simply use the dental tip, please open, and we can, I would be in an optimal position, of course, but then we can treat accordingly along that gum line. Um, typically, you don't need to spend more than 15 to 60 seconds in the oral cavity for most conditions. In the case of treating TMJ, this point would not be recommended because of its beam is too narrow to cover muscular areas. Um, that is for the muscular component, the myofascial component, etc. However, with the TMD area, then, or not D, but TMJ structure, then I can specifically focus on that joint with this tip. However, heat must be controlled because the beam is narrower or more focused. If I'm actually working with TMD and I want to irritate this structure, then it is easier just to use um, this particular um, aperture or the general aperture. I would dial it so that it actually is a narrower beam. So if I'm focused on a joint, it'll stay more focused over that joint. If I want to work with temporalis muscle, then I would spread the beam so that I can cover more of the muscle. And hair blocks um, laser to some extent or absorbs it. So I will always get less when I'm over the hairline, so I may have to spend a little bit longer. Also by using small rotational motions allows me to go between the hair and get more energy into that temporalis region as well. Uh, of course in dentistry we know that there is a TMD um, relationship with cervical dysfunction as well and in the field of dentistry it's my understanding that we can treat uh, from C7 up, and in that case, 
treating a C-spine with this particular aperture is excellent, not only along the joint lines, but also along the lines of uh, the muscles, including the SCMs and the traps. Again, the degenerative disc, and then I would use more of a focused aperture or just stay longer on it with this narrower beam. And in conditions of uh, post-traumatic, that is where there's facial lesions associated with dental damage uh, or oral cavity, um, post-surgical, then I would treat not only the dental component, but I could treat the facial as well. And that will accelerate lesion healing, which will contribute to the whole healing process as well. Neuropathy, such as in the case of trigeminal neuropathy, neuropathy or neuritis, uh, if I have a, an adverse reaction to an injection, then I definitely want to use a super pulse. Very low energy levels or very low settings on it from uh, um, power and um, frequency. And I would treat that um, cautiously in the beginning to make sure I understand where the point of nerve um, irritation may be. Lasers will not cause permanent irritation of nerve in a neuropathy or neuritis, but they can increase the discomfort for a couple of hours, two, three, four hours afterward, if the heat buildup is too high within the nerve. So whether it's alveoli um, component or the division one, two, or three, I can actually treat all the way back from the base where the um, nucleus starts and uh, also work along the facial nerve accordingly and um, just track it slowly. Typically, treating facial nerve is that any given division shouldn't take more than 10 to 30 seconds. Bacterial management, again, you treat both from external and internal, or you can get the uh, longer, smaller aperture along the gum line on either side of it and focus on that particular area, that dental socket, that um, abscess, etc., and focus on that directly. Um, the one thing that is important to recognize is that focal treatment can be beneficial, but it is not as necessary as we're trained to believe because treating with spillover to surrounding tissue is actually not going to adversely affect that tissue. It will actually enhance the overall effect because of its relationship to heme, blood flow, lymphatic. So if I have an abscess, et cetera, it doesn't hurt for me to actually even treat along the lymphatic line to get better drainage or to treat along the, um, uh, uh, in, a, in a broader beam, uh, I will get better benefit because I'll get more micro um, uh, or increased uh, microcirculation in that area. I'll get increased overall tissue response, overall local immunity will be broadened and supportive tissue or interaction of tissue within a given area is all going to be enhanced. So the benefits are increased. Um, that doesn't mean just a general take a shine a flashlight on the whole area, but don't be afraid to use a larger beam for smaller problems as well to get added benefit. I believe that covers most of the conditions that you will see in a dental setting and if not, it will actually help to, um, to illustrate how you simply transfer that information to other conditions as well. Thank you.